What's up, folks? Um, I've been getting a lot of requests to uh, revisit the uh, the Cheryl uh, Weimar case, and uh, I've been a little slow to go back to that because there haven't been uh, much uh, developments um, since that whole thing happened. However, um, a new name has come into the equation. Um, Ryan uh, Dion, and apparently he was uh, one of the two primary aggressors in the case. Um, from what I understand, uh, him and uh, Lieutenant Turner were the primary aggressors and there were two more officers involved. Um, her husband, Carl Weimar, um, he initiated a, a, a civil suit on behalf of his wife. And um, the details came out in in uh, in the law the lawsuit that he filed. Um, initially, I believe that you know they picked her up and they slammed her somehow. But uh, according to the lawsuit, it was a, a lengthy beating. They beat her from one place to another, took her um, you know away from surveillance to a blind spot after they initially beat her and beat her some more. And from what I understand, Lieutenant Turner was striking her in, in, in the back with his elbow. And one of the elbow strikes hit her in the back of the neck and that's what paralyzed her. She became a quadriplegic. Um, I reported uh, initially that she was a paraplegic. She's a quadriplegic, meaning she can't use her arms or her legs. But um, that second officer, his name's floating out there. Um, I figured that I might want to uh, point some things out that may have been overlooked. Um, you know, uh, th th this case has been getting uh, some good press uh, or, or press. I don't know if you want to call it good or bad, but it, it's been uh, some light has been shined on this case. You know, I typically shine a light on cases that are not talked about, but uh, she she's uh, getting due exposure. But there's some things I want to point out about her case that uh, may help people going forward with it. For one, uh, the uh, the lawsuit that was initiated, it listed four John Doe's. Now, what happens in the lawsuit when you initially list officers as John Doe's, um, you do that because you're not sure of who the perpetrators were. You just know how many there, there were. Um, sooner rather than later, the judge is going to issue a summons and when the summons is, is issued and services is uh, provided to the defendants, that's when the names are going to come out. So I'm going to leave a link in the description to um, the docket on that case. And if you guys want to check back and forth on that case uh, after the, the summons have been filed, you can keep checking the docket until you see when the summons is filed. And uh, once that's filed, the names of the John Doe's is going to come out. It's going to be revealed. And if the judge doesn't order DOC to uh, substitute the John Doe's, the uh, the lawyer for uh, for the Weimars, he's going to uh, file an amendment to his complaint to change the, the, the four John Doe's to the four officers and. Uh, with there being four John Doe's, that means there was four male officers that did this to her. Because uh, when you have uh, females that you don't know the name of, of course, you list them as Jane Doe until the summons comes out. So um, keep your eyes on the docket. There's a link in the description to the docket if you guys want to check back and forth on that. Um, also, looking at the uh, the case number, I saw MW in the middle of that uh, that case number. And the MW means that this case is going to be before Judge Mark Walker. And um, that is, in my opinion, a true blessing to um, to the Weimars because they're going to get a, 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 a just trial, de de depending on how the process goes. If this even goes to a trial, um, they're going to is going to be level ground. Um, that's the judge. Uh, he was appointed by Barack Obama. And when I prosecuted those correctional officers, that's who I, that, that was the judge that presided over the case. 
and um, I seen it firsthand how his proceedings go. Um, there's no games. Uh, you, you, you might want to look into some of his uh, past rulings concerning the Department of Corrections, but, um, you know, get an idea of, uh, you know, uh, how he presides over his cases. I've never seen a more fair uh, judge ever. So um, get familiar with Judge Walker. Look into, uh, you know, some of his uh, past rulings and things that he's done. Um, there's a Wikipedia on it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to leave a Wikipedia uh, on, on Judge Walker in the description as well. So you guys can, you know, get a, a better understanding and uh, just keep your eyes out on the docket to see, you know, once the, when the summons come back, if, if they uh, amend the complaint to change the John Doe's to who the people are. And uh, there was a little bit more confusion about uh, the Lieutenant Keith Turner. Apparently, uh, there's two Keith Turners at the uh, Lowell Correctional Institution, and they're both still employed there. One's an inspector, one's uh, the defendant in this case. And... Um, uh, they're, I don't I, I, I don't think they're related because they're very close in age, which means that they could only be brothers or cousins. You know, I, I assume one was probably the father and one was probably the son. But uh, given their proximity and age, I don't think there's a relation. I think that might just be a coincidence. Uh, it might not be. You know, I'm not certain on that, but um, I, I checked them out and uh, they're definitely not father son. So uh, that was the confusion. There are two two Keith Turners there. Keith D. Turner, who was the inspector, and Keith M. Turner, who's the uh, the defendant. Um, elbow strike to the neck is what caused the uh, the injury, the, the the permanent injury, and um, the judge is gonna gonna be Mark Walker in this case. Just an update.